Hi, Grant. I'm Nazal from the upcoming Lovely to Speak to You today. So you too. Congratulations on this fantastic, inspiring and, and really uplifting film. I really enjoyed it. So, Thank you. Um, Perhaps you could start, you, you're sort of renowned for these collaborations with George Clooney and, and such success with previous um, projects. Um, but what put you on the same page in choosing to tell this story? What was it about it that appealed to you? Um, well, we both had read the book a long time ago when it first came out. And uh, we, we both wanted to make it into a film. It's that kind of a book. But we didn't get it. And uh, many years later, it finally came back around came available and we said let's let's do this and uh, just felt particularly like the right time to tell a story that had uh, themes of sort of um, teamwork and um, hopefulness and just it just seemed like a good time for it. And that, how did you kind of go about selecting your cast for this because I also believe that it was quite a lengthy sort of three month process because none of them could even row. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was... well, it was tough because you had to, you know, rowers are uh, generally tall, mm -hmm. so they had to be tall enough um, and they had to be fit enough, enough. Um, so that was, that narrowed it down and then we, and then we auditioned them. Um, and then when we saw Callum, we knew that he was our guy to, to play Joe Rance, to play the lead. And then the rest of the guys just kind of filled in. And then, yeah, you're right, we had to, um, they had to train for three months, you know, like real rowing training, like 12 hours a day of either rowing or working out, you know, dieting, you know, it was a, it was a nightmare <laughs> for them. Do you think they've got a real taste for it now? Oh yeah, they got a taste for it. <laughs> um, so I loved the cinematography in this. I yeah. mean, wow. I mean, there's some fantastic moments when they're on the water and, you know, and you shoot in and out. It really makes you feel a part of, of this. So what were some of the challenges though of filming the water? Well, uh, Martin Rue, who's our, our, our director of photography, who we worked with many times, um, uh, you know, we had to come up with a plan because it's really, it's tricky to shoot boats because you're in a boat, they're in a boat, and the way those boats travel, you can't be, you can't be in front of them because your wake will make those boats tip over. So um, we had to figure out just creative ways to, 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 to get around that and to make it feel, you know, rowing is, rowing is not a sport that most audiences are used to watching like car racing or uh, horse racing or, you know, different kinds of race. So we had to figure out, like, a visual language to make it feel exciting. I mean, what were the kind of inspirations then behind this film? Because, I mean, it's, there's little elements of, like, Chariots of Fire and there's... You know, Chariots things of Fire. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> was... Chariots of Fire. Uh, there's a film called um, Hoosiers. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. Um, um, you know, Rocky, any any sort of uh, film where you you don't believe that these guys are going to win, mm -hmm. and then they end up winning. That's kind of a paradigm for this. And I think what's interesting about this film is that it's very much about the underdog, kind of um, you know it's... competing against. You know, rowing is a very elitist kind of sport as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so, and there's so many layers to this. You know, there's kind of the romance, termination. Can you talk about some of those? Uh, the come through in well, this film. Well, just to, to give some context, you know, rowing in the 30s was the biggest spectator sport uh, in the world at the time. So they would, hundreds of thousands of people would come to watch these races. Um, so it was a big deal. It wasn't like, uh, it's, it's much, now it feels a little different. Although when I was here, we were here shooting in the UK, um, the Oxford, um, um, Cambridge. Cambridge race <laughs> was here and we watched that. That was, that was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's a you know there's a beautiful love story uh, in here uh, that sort of you know the movie the movie is um, it's it doesn't feel old fashioned but there are elements to it that are sort of uh, primary to kind of any film any of these sort of underdog films and uh, Callum's love story is one of them and obviously keeping quite true to the story um, in, in bringing this to screen, but what are some of the things that you kind of adapted so that it had this cinematic kind of quality to it? Well, you know, we just had to, oh, we had to open it up uh, scope-wise. You know, you want it to feel epic on the screen. So it was mostly, most of that involved the races and really finding a way to, with each race, and I don't know if you noticed, but with each race uh, we decided, we'd start sort of wide, uh, just generally and in, with each race the camera gets in closer and closer so by the end you're literally in the boat with the boys 
you know, you feel like you're almost in that boat, and that was that was definitely by design. And can you talk about the the music that you use in this, the composer? Yeah, well, uh, Alexander Desplat, who's another uh, guy we've collaborated with. This is probably, I think, maybe our eighth film that we've done with him. You know, and he's uh, he's just a spectacular composer. You know, so um, if you saw if you see these races without a score, it feels very different. Um, you know they say that score can really change a movie and in this case it really you know because those races you know there's no dialogue in those races it's just you know and your heart is you know your heart is pumping <laughs> we screened it last night and the people sitting in front of me i could see you know they were they were like doing this in their seat as they were you know yeah it's definitely made for the big screen and and joel Egerton as your lead as a coach in this what was the choice for him you know joel uh, I've just been a, uh, both George and I have just been a huge fan of Joel's for a long time, and we love that film um, Warrior. Um, and you know, you needed somebody who could be stoic, uh, but who could also have some charm, and who could you feel could really uh, kick these kids' ass. And and so Joel was the right guy for that. And what do you hope the viewers will kind of take away from this? What would you like them to feel once they come out? Of I mean, you know, cinema? this is a film that you want everybody to come out feeling elated and have having gone on a ride and um, and feeling good. That, I mean, that's why we made the movie. We wanted to make something that felt, you know, it, it, times are times are a little, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, this is a this is a, a rough time I think for a, a lot of people and. So, at, particularly at Christmas, we wanted to have a movie that people could go to, go with their friends, go with their families, because um, it's really for any, this film. Anybody can watch this film and to um, just uh, just have a great time. Yeah, and and as a project, uh, next thing that you're kind of looking towards, would you kind of delve into any other sort of biographical tales? Is it kind of given you the taste for that kind of world? Well, we've done a bunch of them. You know, mm -hmm. we did we yeah. did Edward R. Murrow, and we did, I did a film called Argo, which is do a lot of films. Uh, I like stories that are based uh, in reality because I know that they're already good stories. You know, it's like it's like you get a little bit of a head start. Yeah. And what, were there any kind of standout moments on set that you look back and you kind of feel maybe most proud of or or that kind of stood out for you with this cast? Well, um, I shot all I shot all, a lot of the um, the water work. And George and I, we would do it together. We would have we basically had two crews shooting all that stuff. So the water work was particularly challenging. And um, and. So I think I'm most proud of that, but not just for just for me, but for the boys because they had to do all that rowing, which is incredibly difficult, you know. And it wasn't like they could just sort of, you know, we do a, a shot and then go into the shore and they could go hang out in a trailer. They had to stay out there like you know for hours and hours and hours at a time, and sometimes it was cold and windy and wet and and um, so. But I think that the most challenging things end up being the most memorable. And did they sort of train with the with Olympic rowers as well to get them up to they that trained standard? With, they had two Olympic coaches that they trained with, and um, and then support staff, and they cha uh, trained up uh, at Oxford, and um, so uh, occasionally they trained for about two weeks, and then George and I went up to watch them for the first time row, and uh, they were terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. We were, we were we looked at each other and we thought we were worried. We came back a couple weeks later, and they had definitely improved, but still, you know, because the thing about this is if you don't buy the rowing, then the movie doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but by the last time we went up to, uh, to, to watch, um, they'd had it, and they were, they, were, they were really good. And the way we shot the film was we shot the training sequences first, so they could be a little bit off, and then uh, we shot the races in order. So by the time we get to the Olympics, they were, they were like, they're like Olympic rowers. Oh my goodness! And, and what was George like as a director in in the director's seat for this particular film? Um, he was, you know, he was like he always is. He's he's very calm and and level. -headed. Although there were a couple times when he had to really like uh, he had to kind of give it to the to the boys, you know, because um, they might slack off. He had to be like a coach in some ways to them. Yeah. Because they could, you know, kind of start to slack off a little bit, and we're like, no, we're, you know, we're in the at the end of the biggest race of the of their career. You guys got to, you know, you got to, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. Um, I was talking to Callum on the red carpet, and he said that he, um, artists wanted to join a rowing club as well. <laughs> he sort this? of looked into this, yes. Yeah. 
because <laughs> it's just such an amazing sport to get into, and I think it can be quite addictive. It's a real team sport, isn't it? It's so. a great, it's a great sport, and it's uh, you know, it's beautiful to be if you be out in the water. And I'm sure that you you've been out in like early mornings when the water's all glassy, and you see one person out there rowing. It's really quite beautiful. Yeah. Well, but thank you so much for speaking to me thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and good luck with the film. Thank, thank you. you very much.